Today we're going to be discussing the purchase to payment process in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, including the purchase order process, receiving, invoicing, and payment journals. Hello Dynamics community, I'm Dave from Bond Consulting Services. One of our experts, Lupe, will be discussing the purchasing functionality and benefits of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. To enter a purchase order, we would navigate to Purchasing, Purchase Orders. This will take us to the Purchase Orders list, where we have a list of all the different transactions that have been started. Now to start a new one, we would select the plus new. The purchase order page will open and now we could go ahead and select the vendor by clicking on. We get a list of all our vendors and now we could go ahead and select the vendor which we'll be placing this order to. In the general section, we could click on show more to find additional information of the vendor, including their default address. Now we also have the document date, which is the transaction date, your posting date, the date that it's going to post to the general ledger, and then the due date that will be used if we record an invoice from this transaction. In addition, you have the vendor order date. Your, in addition, you also have the purchase order date, which was specify the date of this order. Scrolling down to our shipping and payment section, we could specify the ship to location, including the company address or one of the specific location or warehouses we have set up. Once we have specified the shipping and payment information and start entering the items that we'll be ordering from this vendor. In the number field, you can start typing the number or description and the system will automatically filter the list. If we have selected a location, that will automatically populate and now we could specify the quantity. The system will automatically calculate the cost based on the last cost we have used, but we could update that amount. And the system will recalculate the totals. Once we have entered all the line items, we could proceed and printing the purchase order. If you have the vendor's email address, we also have the send option to email directly to your vendor. Under the print option, you have several options under send to, where you could send the report in Word, Excel, or PDF. The print option will print directly to a printer, or we could select the preview option to preview within the browser. Once the purchase order has been sent to the vendor, we, that we could go ahead and once the purchase order has been sent to the vendor, we could go ahead and select release, release to state that it's ready for the next stage of processing. Once the inventory comes to our warehouse or location, we could go down to the line items and specify the quantity to receive. If there's a partial receipt or the quantity is different from the one ordered, we could update the amount. In this case, we'll leave it for the full quantity. We can now go out to the document date and posting date to reflect the date that we actually receive these items. Once the date has been updated, we would go under posting post and select the receive option. Once we click OK, the system will automatically receive the quantity specified in the quantity to receive field. If we want to review the receipt under Navigate, we have the Receipts option. And here you could go ahead and open the receipt record to review the information. If you accidentally receive the purchase order, under the line section, more options, we have a function that could undo the receipt to record it appropriately. Once the receipt has been made and we receive the invoice from our vendor, we could invoice directly from the purchase order. Here we will go ahead and update our posting date 
to the date of the vendor invoice. The due date will automatically calculate based on the vendor's payment terms, and we could specify the vendor invoice number. In the line section, we could also change the quantity to invoice if it's something different than the original order quantity. Once we have specified the information, we could go under posting post and select the invoice option. Once we click OK, the system will record the invoice and now we could click on yes to open the posted invoice. So the posted purchase invoice we can no longer modify, but if there's any errors, we do have the correct and cancel options available. Once the purchase invoice has been posted, now we're going to proceed in recording a payment. Under cash management, we're going to select payment journals. And here we could go ahead and select the corresponding batch. In our case, we're going to select the bank reconciliation batch since we have the bank account where we're going to be issuing the payments from. Once we open the batch, we could specify the date of our payment. The document type will be payment. And then we could go ahead and select the vendor that we'll be issuing the payment to. Once we have selected the vendor, we could go under process, apply entries. Here we're going to get a list of all the open invoices. And now we could select which ones we want to pay. In this case, we'll pay two invoices. So once we have selected them, we're going to click on Process, Set Applies to ID. In the Amount to Apply field, we could change the amount we want to pay if we want to issue a partial payment. Once we have updated the amount to apply, we'll go ahead and click OK. the amount will automatically calculate based on the selections we made in the previous screen. The bank account information will automatically populate based on the batch we have selected. Under the bank payment type field, we could specify what type of payment this is. A computer check would be a check generated from the system. A manual check would be a check issued manually or a payment done outside the system. Electronic payment would generate an ACH file that could be uploaded to your bank's portal. In this case, we'll go ahead and issue a computer check. Once we have selected computer check, I could go up to the check menu and select print check. Bank account, we would confirm the bank account where we're issuing the payment and then select the print option. So here's a preview of a sample check. These could be modified as needed based on your company's needs. Once the payment has been finalized, we would select the post print option and post. We will confirm and then we would get a confirmation that the journal lines have posted successfully. Thank you Lupe for showcasing the Dynamics 365 capabilities and thank you Dynamics community for your attention. We hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about utilizing Dynamics 365 to grow your business. Click here for our related videos. Utilize our website down below.